Hi, it's Dr. Ogden. In this lecture, we're going to look a little bit at cloning. So this word cloning a lot of times draws a lot of controversy, but it really doesn't have to, um, at least certain, certain aspects of this. So before we've actually talked about asexual reproduction, which is a type of cloning. So look at this carrot. If I take some cells from the root tips of these carrots, these cells can be placed in a growth medium. And these cells are kind of special in a sense that they have not necessarily been differentiated for any particular um, tissue type in the carrot, right? They haven't said, okay, you have to become a leaf or you have to become, you know, the inside of a carrot. They, they have the ability to become different types, all of the different, um, all of the different Ty uh, parts of a carrot. And so you can put these cells in a growth medium and as they grow they just continue to undergo the process of mitosis. And as it starts to grow then the cells start to look at each other and say, oh okay I'll become the leaves and you become the root part. And eventually you can allow that to grow and grow and grow more and it becomes the adult plant, the adult carrot. Okay? Now this adult carrot is a clone of the original adult, uh, adult carrot because it is genetically identical and the genotype, the, the, the genes for this, all came from um, a genome that came from one of the cells of the adult carrot, right? And so that is essentially a clone. And so cloning happens naturally all of the time. Uh, there's many organisms who have just decided cloning is a better way to do this. Even uh, vertebrates that do this. There's lizards that live in the southwest that are all females and the female just clones, makes clones of herself so it's an enti her entire genome becomes the new genome in the, uh, in, the, in the new organism. There's no sexual reproduction that happens, no meiosis that's going on. And so there's lots of organisms that do this. Um, the other type of cloning that, um, that a lot of times when you say cloning, this is what people more think about, is the cloning that usually becomes a re, um, reproductive cloning, which is where you clone a new individual, right? So let's back up though and look and see how this process might come about. So first of all, you, um, the way that we do this is we take an egg cell. So you take an egg cell from an, an organism. Uh, you could do this with, from a frog, right? You could take frog eggs before they're fertilized by a male or you could take um, human um, eggs from, you know, they do this in fertilization clinics all the time where they go in and they actually take eggs out of a female and then they'll do in vitro fertilization inside of this clinic. But you can take these eggs and you can remove the nucleus, which at this point is just a haploid nucleus, and you can introduce an entire new nucleus that could come from a donor cell and this donor cell could come from the adult somatic cells of, of any uh, adult and you basically introduce that entire genome into this cell and then this cell begins to grow and it's now diploid not haploid and it begins to grow and these cells begin to divide and undergo the process of mitosis. Now at this point all of these cells are genetically identical, but not only that, they're also similar to the cells ab above here where we're talking about carrots, where they are undifferentiated. Another word for this is that they are totipotent, meaning all-powerful, meaning they have the ability to become any kind of cell in the entire adult body. At this point, you can take these cells and introduce them into the uterus of a um, surrogate mother. And that surrogate mother then becomes essentially pregnant. And that and these clumps of cells now become a zygote. And they continue to go undergo the process of mitosis and the process of differentiation, where cells continue to become different parts of the adult individual. Uh, and then eventually this, um, this individual is born, and now you have an offspring. But notice in this, in this cartoon here that the baby here has a white face, whereas the adult surrogate mother has a black face. And in sheep genetics, it's impossible to get a white-faced offspring from a black-faced mother. And so this is like visual proof that indeed this was, this was a cloned sheep. And you know, this, is, this was kind of the setup for that, the first cloned um, uh, large animal, which was Dolly the sheep. Now, you can also though take a different pathway where you take these embryonic stem cells, and that's the word that we use for these, and I'm sure you've heard these um, mentioned in the news, and you can take these cells 
and, in, and put them in a growth medium that has particular chemicals or other types of stimuli that, that then make these cells follow a, a certain pathway and become not a new individual, but only um, tissues that are now specialized. For example, it could be um, skin cells that all form kind of this skin, this skin tissue that's right here that then could be used, you know, to graft onto the, onto the body of maybe a burn vic victim, for example. So let's look at some other organisms that have actually undergone organismal reproduction, where you reproduce an entire new organism. Uh, cats have been cloned, pigs have been cloned, many types of uh, domesticated animals have been cloned, animals that maybe are close to extinction have been cloned, and so forth. These pigs have kind of an interesting example. They, um, pigs, it turns out, have tissues and organs that, that seem to work okay inside of humans, so you could actually do organ transplants. But many pigs, or many humans, though, don't accept that pig organ very well. And that's because on the outside of the cells of the pigs, they have proteins that the immune system of the humans recognize and reject. And so they've actually genetic en genetically engineered some of these pigs to lack the genes or to have genes that are non-functional so therefore they don't produce the proteins on the outside of the cells that tend to be rejected by the human immune system. So the idea is that you may be able to transplant genetically modified organs from these pigs, put them into humans and the humans will accept them more readily. This is called xenotransplantation. If you're interested, here's a list, I don't know if this is up how up to date this is, but of about 22 um, animals that have been cloned, you know, so everything from horses to dogs to cats, even, you know, something like a water buffalo from India. And this water bu buffalo actually is, um, has been engineered and bred to have lots, uh, to produce lots and lots of really rich milk. And so, you know, a reason for doing cloning might be that you now have a variety of buffalo that's producing a really rich milk. You know, so there's lots of reasons why you might do this. Now the other way that we d discussed was where you do therapeutic cloning. So again, if you take these embryonic stem cells, you can then in in induce them to become different types of tissues, maybe blood cells or nerve cells or muscle cells. We also can take adult stem cells, and these are stem cells that are not totipotent. They can't become everything, but they can become some things, like adult um, bone marrow um, stem cells can become most of the products of the blood, and so you can induce these stem cells to become types of the blood cells. So there's lots of ways that you can talk about cloning. It doesn't just mean we're cloning humans. Um, by the way, no humans have been cloned, at least as far as we know, unless there's some crazy scientist out there who's trying to do this. But for the most part, we don't do this. In fact, it's illegal in almost all countries. Um, and uh, this is kind of just you know a nice little quick summary of cloning. So it's still controversial, but I think there's lots of different ways that we can think about cloning that maybe are not so controversial.